Hey guys, Bridger Blade Mango here, and so let's open up that nice console war BS can of worms and talk about the Xbox One and the Xbox One X. So um, today, if you aren't aware, Xbox had their big, uh, and I put big in quotation marks, Gamescom media showcase slash developer interview thing. I don't really know quite what to call that. It's not a conference. It's not a keynote. It's not exactly a media showcase. It's like a like an interview thing. A thing, I guess. It's a thing. Xbox's Gamescom thing. And it's been getting a lot of uh, mixed or negative reception from a lot of the community, um, mainly because they really were unimpressed by what Xbox showed this year. And I'm one of them. I I thought that thing was dull as hell. Um, I was watching it kind of off and on, and I, I it just could not hold my attention span for like like 30 minutes i just i watched it and i watched it and i just was like what the fuck is this and it's not like they had any big world premiere exclusives to keep me on edge or to keep me baited towards the end like literally they ended with the show with you know oh here's an announcement of when you can pre-order the xbox one x Woohoo! A console that I'm not gonna get. So, yay! Not exactly the thing that's gonna keep me in, involved in your little thing, your little Gamescom thing, Xbox. But I think it also highlighted, you know, this was Xbox's last big push for wanting to get people excited for the Xbox One X. This was the one. This was this was the the one chance, one shot, the one final moment, and they blew it. Honestly, I think it it flopped because the Xbox One X, even in this market where it's getting its ass handed to it by um, the PS4, and even like with the rise of the Switch being popular and all that, Xbox. This the, the X really needed to be their next chance, their next big thing. And I think since the beginning where it was revealed that it was pretty much just going to be like a, a more a slightly more powerful PS4 Pro, um a lot of the a lot of the interest has kind of waned over the last couple of months and what was really going to sell the console wasn't going to be the the teraflops and the pixels and all that. And as I said before in my past E3 video about this, the Microsoft conference at E3, it was going to be the games that would sell this thing. And so far, that has been severely underwhelming. And I felt like this Gamescom thing was Xbox's final chance to really bring... The big guns, because they talked about how they held stuff back. They held things back for E3. They didn't want to talk about certain games that were on the horizon or going to come out within the next year or two. And on one hand, I understand that because look at what happened with things like Fable Legends and Crackdown and Scalebound, where they announced those years ago, and then they either have gotten delayed into multiple delays or canceled outright and I get that on the other hand when you have this big system coming out that's supposed to be your next chance and you're gonna hype it to high heaven then you really need the games and I'm not just talking about third-party stuff you really need the exclusives to, to bring home the bacon with how you're gonna present this and Xbox just kinda that was that was Xbox. Just that's what they did today. And rather than go through and talk about how 
like every little thing was boring and all that and and pointing out where the the mixed messaging and then all the bullshit and all the boredom and all that i instead want to talk about just the overall problem with xbox at this point and reasons that i have that could be you know why xbox is the way it is right now with its exclusives so let's start with first of all i want to criticize what xbox has been doing somewhat for the last couple of years uh two noteworthy examples with this where they do the the timed exclusive or three noteworthy examples i guess even though dead rising 4 didn't really make that big of an impact um so rise of the tomb raider is a big one and player unknown the the player unknowns uh, battlegrounds or whatever it's called um two big games that initially were told hey we're gonna have this be an xbox exclusive we're gonna have this coming exclusively to xbox in 2015 in 2017 and a lot of people get confused by this and it's xbox really reaching for that exclusive you know we need our our console exclusives we need our timed exclusives and the problem is I feel like with those kind of investments, it's not they're not really putting the money where it should go. I've heard recently that Xboxes, um, it's just a rumor, of course, but it's one that makes a lot of sense. Where I've heard that Xboxes kind of uh, surplus a supply of money to fund these really large, risky uh, AAA first-party games are just the the money is not there anymore because they've kind of put their eggs in the wrong basket you know like scalebound was an investment for them and that failed well fable legends was an investment for them and that failed um they put money in sunset overdrive and that undersold they put money in um quantum break and that undersold they put god knows how much money into crackdown 3 and sea of thieves and state of decay 2 and particularly Crackdown 3, that thing keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And there are like info blackouts of that thing for like two years. I think, I think, I, I'm not exaggerating when I say like it was a, almost two years before we saw anything of Crackdown 3 again. It was August 2015, which ironically was Games, Gamescom, and then E3 2017. Like it was just nothing. It was nothing. And that's not good. And Xbox, you know, they don't have a, a magic ball. They can't predict, you know, what's going to fail and what's going to succeed. But I feel like with them trying to invest in this stuff and not really having a tight hold on production schedules and everything and on what's what it's going to be, they've kind of just let their their games just run wild they, they don't it doesn't seem like they really have their shit together in terms of investing in something nurturing it seeing it through to the end um or you have something like like for example recore where that thing kind of just came out and then because of all the bad osmosis from mighty number no. nine and it having kg and afuni's name attached to recore xbox just kind of dropped that thing and we're like oh well we'll just release it quietly and you know have it be 40 bucks and, and maybe it'll sell something and it bombed and it got like middling reviews and barely anyone talks about recore in fact i shit you not i forgot that game even existed until they brought it up today because it's going to be enhanced it's going to have a, a remaster it's a remaster of an xbox one game for the one for the x in 4k and it's got like one extra mission in it and, and whatever but it just feels like Xbox just does not have their eggs in the right basket with these situations. Um, as far as these brand new IPs, you know, Sea of Thieves, Quantum Break, Sunset Overdrive, and even like old franchises like Crackdown, it's Sata to, to Decay, it's like a lot of people are expecting those games to hopefully do well, but they're not really ringers like like when you hear say decay a lot i think the general thing is just kind of like eh when you hear something like 
Mario or Zelda, it's like, oh my god, Mario and Zelda, holy shit. Like, Xbox doesn't really have that many names that people just go, like, like the hype level will just go, whoop, just bump up. Uh, speaking of which, I think another problem that Xbox has right now is the franchises that they do have that are iconic, I think have kind of been like seriously lost their punch power recently um microsoft was willing to let go of epic they were willing to let go of bungie so because they didn't want to make halo or gears of war anymore they didn't want to keep pumping out games to these franchises they were getting tired like epic wanted to go on to make other things and Bungie wanted to make Destiny, which, you know, I you know my thoughts on Destiny, but, you know, hey, it, it's, like, one of the most well-known new IPs out there, and Xbox could have had that if they had, you know, taken care of that and let them stay at Xbox and beg them to stay at Xbox and make, please make Destiny for us, please, people, it, it might have turned out to be a better game. But they didn't, and they were like, oh, bye-bye, you don't want to work on Halo anymore, bye-bye, we'll just make uh, 343 do that. Oh, Epic Games, you don't want to make Gears of War anymore, bye-bye, we'll have uh, the Coalition do it now. And this is where they have the tightness on their franchise, but in a bad way. Like, Gears of War 4 and Halo 4 and 5 just don't really have the the oomph that the past games to like when i was a kid when i was like like 14 15 13 12 those were big ass names like gears of war was huge when xbox 360 was coming out i remember people losing their minds when halo 2 came out when i was in elementary school i remember people raving when halo 3 was announced and that was going to be a launch title for our it was going to be a title for the xbox 360 that was a reason to get an xbox 360 halo 3 fuck yes it's going to complete the trilogy to two of my all-time favorite games and now it's like halo 4 kind of like yeah okay halo 5 yeah okay gears of war 4 yeah okay sure those games have their fans I respect that. I fully understand that. But, you know, as far as general perception, it's just kind of middling compared to what it could be. Like, imagine if they had given Halo a break for all these years. Like, like Halo Reach, I think, came out like 2010, 2011. Imagine if they had, like, just now announced a new Halo for the Xbox One X. Holy shit, that would be huge. Like, and it was made by, you know, like, them trying to get, you know, top-tier talent involved and, and, like, making it, like, not exactly like the old games, but, you know, making it a better, more refined version of the old games. That's a, that's a name. Halo. You get Halo up there, put Halo 4 up there, available for the Xbox One X, you're good. You, you're good. You got your Breath of the Wild right there. But... No, they didn't. They they rushed out another Halo game, and that went okay, I guess. And then they made Halo 5, which was I considered to be a big disappointment by a lot of people. And then just, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, they have those franchises. like And then in, and in Forza, of course. Forza is like probably the most consistent thing. Every time that thing comes out... You know, people love it. People love Forza. People, you know, that are into racing love it. I understand that. I get that. I respect that. It's just not for me. But that's a problem when your two biggest franchises, like their biggest well-known names, Halo and Gears, don't have the stomping power that they once had. And that's a big problem. Um, finally, another big problem I think Microsoft have with as far as like trying to cultivate this you know, library of nice big games is that, I hate to say it, because it's, I, I get why everyone considers this a pro-consumer thing. I completely understand that. However, 
This recent crop of the Play Anywhere program with Xbox making every exclusive available for the PC just makes the Xbox brand look tired and unnecessary. If you own a PC like I do, like I have a PC that has a Windows 10 on it, I could play every single one of their exclusives on my PC. I don't have to buy an Xbox One. I don't have to buy an Xbox One X. And I'd probably get a better experience playing it on my PC. But that, again, begs the question. Why, does, why do we need an Xbox One X? Why do we need an Xbox One? When we could just have, you know, a PC, spend a little bit more money to get a PC, and you'll be fine. You know, PCs are pretty affordable these days in terms of, like, you know, you could find anyone to, like, set one up for you. You can pay people to build them for you and shit like that. It's, you know, it's great. PCs are big now. There's a reason why Xbox is trying to get away from being, you know, having Xbox One exclusives anymore. Because they... They want to have it be on Windows 10. They want to have a reason to sell Windows 10. But it's impacting their Xbox brand because it makes the Xbox just look redundant. And again, it's pro-consumer. I, I, I love, I, I, on one hand, I love that Xbox is doing this because that means I don't have to deal with buying an Xbox One X just to play a bunch of games that I'll probably end up being disappointed with anyway. But it's not helping it, it does it makes the xbox brand look obsolete it's it's like why why would you buy an xbox one x when you can just get a pc like a really good pc for probably that price maybe like a hundred dollars more 600 bucks you could get a decent pc for that and ah it just doesn't make any sense to me why xbox would kind of cut off one of their own legs in order to strengthen another leg, it's like you're you're fine. That one leg is more powerful, but you only got one leg now, and you're limping behind. It's 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 not looking good, guys. And all this worrying and concern about Xbox, you know, like Xbox One X. Here we're gonna have the best games and all that, but it's games that I can play on PC. It's games I can play on my PS4. It's game some games I could probably play on the the Switch. I'm sure there are some out there that. Xbox is hyping up that I can play on the Switch. Um, you don't have a big launch game. Crackdown 3, not in November 7th, 2017 anymore. Now it's in 2018. And really the only big things you have this year now are... are uh, Forza 7, um, Cuphead, which I can get that on Steam. Uh, Super Lucky's Tale, which I hope to God I can get that on Steam because I actually want to try that out. Um, that's kind of about it. Like everything else is just the third party stuff. Um, and you bought the, the timed exclusive stupid shit for, you know, player unknowns battleground, which yes, that is coming to PS4. There's this, there's this big deal earlier today about the, the fucking ridiculous, confusing PR jargon that was used to hype that game up. And yes, it is coming to PS4 eventually, just not in 2017. So, so what can Xbox do to improve their situation? Well, first of all, they need to really ensure that Sea of Thieves, Crackdown 3, Santa K2 are fucking excellent. Like, they need to be, like, can't miss amazing experiences. And I have my doubts that that's going to happen, but it's possible. Weirder things have happened. Another thing is that they need to be very clear about what games they have available for the system exclusively. Because all this wording of like, oh, timed exclusive, world premiere exclusive, yada, 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 just all these exclusives, all these world premieres, and it just, it stops being clear. Like, once you start confusing the customer, that's when people are going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? It's, it, the me the messages are going to get mixed and you're just going to fucking baffle people. And it's just, it sucks because for all the people that I'm, all the shit that I'm probably going to get for this video of all the people going, you know, oh, well, you're a Sony pony and yada, yada, yada. Well, I'd like to make it very clear that 
I want Xbox to succeed. There are things that Xbox is doing right now that I wish PlayStation would dutifully take note of and do in the future. You know, native backwards compatibility, cross-platform play, the Game Pass thing that I think is a really good idea compared to the bullshit PlayStation now. I, I want Xbox to succeed. I want Xbox to be the very best it can be because a healthy, living, thriving Xbox, a strong Xbox, is good for everybody. It is good for the Xbox community, it's good for the game industry, and yes, it is good for the PlayStation community because when PlayStation has healthy competition, they will not get complacent. And PlayStation has kind of been complacent these last couple of years. And they've kind of been allowed to get away with that because they've been coasting on the fact that they have one fantastic exclusive after another and really powerful, you know, third-party partnerships and all that. And it's... Xbox just doesn't... doesn't have that anymore. They used to. The 360 days were, were huge for them. And... Now it's like, uh, it, it sucks just seeing them struggle. And I've never really been a fan of Xbox, but I hope they do better. I, I genuinely want them to do better. And trotting out Minecraft is not going to be the way to go for them. Um, God, I'm so sick of seeing that game just in any Xbox stage. But, and I'll say one final thing. Um, there's a lot of you know videos out there. A lot of people saying, you know, oh, 2017 is the worst year for for Xbox. This is like this is terrible, and it was brought on by the the fact that Crackdown 3 was getting delayed. No, this is not the worst year for Xbox. Calm down. The worst year for Xbox was when the X the the one was announced and it had the DRM, and it got rightfully torn apart by the press, by PlayStation, by everybody. And that was the worst year for them. That was the beginning of the end. And I don't think they've been able to recover from that. That was the thing that shotgunned them in the foot right out of the gate. But they haven't really been doing anything these last four years that have really turned the tide for them. And I was honestly hoping the X would be the thing that turned the tide for them. But it, it hasn't been. It's just been another... Eh, it's just been another situation of, oh, let's see how many things we can call exclusive to make our thing look better. And ugh, it's not a good look for them. It's it's disappointing and it's depressing. Even as someone who, who adores PlayStation, it I say this from the bottom of my heart. I hope Xbox gets their shit together. I hope Xbox is able to turn this around because a healthy, thriving Xbox is good for everybody. So, thank you guys for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe. Let me know what you think about Xbox. Oh, God, those comments. Um, no death threats, please. Jesus. Like, calm down. So, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.